Hey everybody, uh, so I've got a silly little job in the workshop this week. Um, it's not the sort of thing I'd normally take on. I'd look at this and think, mm, yeah, no thanks, not for me. But it's for a client of mine that I've known for a long time. Uh, what we've got is a couple of funny little bits of profile that I need to try and match from uh, existing sort of off the, off the shelf, off the peg. Uh, machine profiles, uh, an OG, and uh, actually got to try and make up some something to equate to a piece of plasterwork, a piece of cornice. Um, I'm going to have to take the paint off this uh, little piece of moulding carefully with a knife or something. Uh, I'm going to do that and get back to you in a second. Uh, that's a bit better. Got the paint off that. We can see what we're looking at now. Uh, as I said, this is a bit of a silly job and normally I'd say thanks but no to it. Uh, but it's for a client that I've known for a long time. And the, basically, the, long story short, they've had some work done in their house and they've got a couple of little bits of moulding that they want replacing. So what I've got is some uh, OG panel moulding and the shape matches pretty well, but it is tall. So I've just got to run that through. I'll do this on the bandsaw probably. Uh, hard to make that cut on the circular saw with that. Just having the blade peeking up a little bit and then it's hard to guard the blade. So I'll just run that through on the bandsaw. It's only a few mil. Uh, I'll cut it slightly wide probably, and then just trim that back with a hand plane and we'll have a, a closer look. So the little practice bit of molding trim back. Uh, on the bandsaw and then plane down. That's a, a pretty good match. That's a pretty good fit. So I think I'll, uh, I'm happy enough with that to know what I'm doing now. And the other little bit of uh, moulding that I've got to do is up, as I said, at uh, sort of picture rail height. I don't, don't have a piece of that. I can only take a, a profile uh, off the moulding that was already there. And it's, you know, a bit of an awkward one. It's almost exactly uh, the same depth as a piece of 25 mil. Uh, dowel. So what I'll do, I couldn't get any half 25 mil dowel for some reason. I could get 22 or 18. Uh, so I'll have to rip that down on the bandsaw. Um, and once I've done that, that'll fit in there pretty well. Uh, and then I'll put a, I'll mount that onto a piece of strip wood like that, and just cut it down to length. Uh, again, cut it down to width, just to get the right sort of shape. Uh, the whole thing is going to be quite heavily filled and of course it'll be way up you know above above head height so you're not going to see that much detail on it. as long as I get the the overall dimensions right then it should go back in without too many problems but that what we'll, that's what we'll do first I'll do the OG molding first uh, and then we'll uh, we'll do the rest of it later. All right, that's come up pretty nicely. Uh, a couple of quick swipes with the hand plane, just to clean that edge up. I'll probably knock that sharp edge off slightly with a little bit of sandpaper, just to age it a little bit. But otherwise, I think that's fine. I think what we'll do is I'll fit the 6x1 Redwood baseboard to start with, then just pin this on. I'm pretty sure that's how it was done originally, which will save the messing about uh, Scribing the two edges, just got to scribe the uh, the profile, and then uh, so next up we've got the uh, the dowel. We'll cut the dowel in half. Uh, we'll run a quick test on this to see, make sure we got got it halfway through. And then we'll offer it up and see how we go from there. So that worked out reasonably well. Uh, got to be very careful that you don't sort of twist it as it goes through. Never really thought about it, to be honest, but I presume that's how they made propellers. Um, which is obviously not what we want, because we're trying to get two perfectly straight halves. Uh, I wonder if it's, there's any mileage in just pinning a flat piece to it to act as a, as a stop as it goes through. That might, uh, might help. I'll see if I can do that. OK, what I've decided to do, I've got a strip of wood that's just a little bit longer than the dowel. I'm going to lay that on a flat board and double side the dowel so that strip wood, so that should keep it located along its length while I make the cut. Uh, yeah. Fingers crossed, anyway. I can always get some more if I need it.
Okay, so <laughs> all things considered, that works surprisingly well, surprisingly good. Um, a little bit thicker at one end than the other, but I don't think that matters too much actually. I'll give that a quick whisk of a hand plane to it, there's uh, down a little bit more even. As I say, they're going to be sort of extensively filled uh, and glued and pinned onto the backing piece. So uh, yeah, okay. So we've ripped the strip of the backing piece down and I've planed that with a very slight bevel on the edge. And now we're just going to glue the half round piece onto it just to give us that sort of profile. I'll just get that glued on tonight and that can set overnight. We'll just probably tape it up. It's tempting to try and put pins through the back of it or something. But, ugh, it's a, a little bit of a piece of sticky tape should sort it out. And then fingers crossed uh, that we'll be nice and tidy in the morning. And then we can start messing about, rounding the edges over a little bit, doing a little bit of filler and whatever else we need to do. But uh, I want to get some glue on this and get it set tonight. So I'm going to press on with that uh, and then I'll catch you again in the morning. All right. All right. Uh, next day, uh, I think we've banished our audio gremlins from yesterday. Yeah, the microphone seems to be working. Uh, yeah, everything's glued up, dried nicely overnight. We'll get this out of the tape, but just on initial sort of inspection, it seems like the profile's a pretty good match uh, for the profile marker that we had. So we'll get this out of the tape, get this rubbed down, get the joins, a little bit of filler, a little bit of cork on the edges. Uh, and then we can uh, get a coat of paint on it, I think. Uh, but yeah. With the tape removed, we can sand all around the edges just to clean everything up and knock off the sharp edges. Uh, and then apply some cork just along the inside edge just to smooth things out a little bit. And with a cork touch dry, we can put a little dab of squeezy filler on the top edge of the uh, moulding. This won't be seen, but it just bothers me that it uh, isn't completely flush. So we'll just fill that before we paint it. And with the filler sanded back, I can just apply a little bit of primer. Uh, I'm not sure when exactly this is going to be fitted. But we'll just prime it for now, then uh, it's ready to go whenever we are. And there we are, fast forward an hour or so, and we've got our sort of six by one painted redwood, primed redwood, uh, skirting board, a baseboard, just a plain plank basically, and we've got our uh, OG profile ready to go on top of that. Uh, one thing that did occur to me, I didn't take the original one out of course, I'm not entirely sure how it sat, but if, you, if this does sit to the rear flush up against the wall as I'd expect it to. You do get this quite big lip here. So what I'll do is I'll take some strip wood with me. This is actually the wrong size. I'll get some the right size, it's a little bit small. Uh, just to plant onto the back of that. And with that in place, it'll actually bring that OG profile forwards to a much more attractive finish. Uh, I may not be able to use that because I don't actually know what's there already. Uh, but if I if I take that with me, then at least I'll I'll have the option of doing it that way. Uh, and this will just be pinned through uh, the profile here uh, into the redwood, into the plain skirting board underneath. And again, I'll probably do that the same way that the original or the the uh, whoever the builders whoever did it uh, back in their sixties or seventies, and fit the skirting board in straight and then fit this on afterwards simply because it's easier to do that it's a it's a simpler job to do uh, and then of course we've got the uh, little bit of profile that'll go high up on the wall pretending to be plaster and should fit right in neatly uh, you won't see that much of it it'll be very high up so you'll only ever get to see the bottom half of it and that should uh, i've got the profile right i know that's the same shape uh, so uh, yes, that should be that. I don't actually know when the install will happen. Uh, when it happens, I'll try and shoot a little bit of video on it uh, if I possibly can. Uh, but that's kind of it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it uh, interesting. Uh, if you did, then uh, don't forget the best way not to miss one of my videos is to subscribe to the channel. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that bell. Then you'll be notified whenever I put up something new. I want to take a second to thank all of my Patreon supporters because without their support, the channel probably still still wouldn't be going, to be perfectly honest. Um, the uh, support 
and contributions that I get from my Patreon uh, pals really do help me to keep the lights on here. So uh, thank you very much indeed to all of my Patreon supporters. Uh, as, as an extra thank you for my Patreon supporters, I do a, a video exclusively, exclusively for them most weeks. That's sometimes a behind the scenes video uh, as the most recent one. And sometimes that's just a special one-off uh, taken from outtakes of a previous job or, or just a, a, a vloggy week in the workshop type of video. Um, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, then there are links down in the video description below. Uh, you can join the party at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop, or indeed uh, you can support the channel directly through PayPal donation if you prefer not to do the Patreon thing. But that is it for this week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.